from the biggest art heist in history, still unsolved. And this is all that's left. I'm Randy Kay outside the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston. This is where it all began, the night of March 18th, 1990. It was St. Patrick's Day weekend. There was a house party at the building right behind the museum. Sometime after midnight, a group of young men left the party and spotted a car with what looked like two Boston police officers inside. They had no idea these two men weren't really police officers, and no clue that just a short time later, these two men would pull off the greatest art heist in history. Come in, uh, clock in, there would be two guards. Rick Abbott was one of the night watchmen on duty the night of the crime. Until now, he'd never done a television interview about what happened that night. Cops rang the doorbell. <laughs> they said, Boston police, we got a report of a disturbance on the premises. So I buzzed them in. That decision to buzz them in is something Rick Abbott has had to live with for the past 23 years. The cop that was dealing with me turned to me and said, don't I know you? Don't I recognize you? I think there's a warrant out for your arrest. Can you step out from behind the desk? Here, Rick makes another grave mistake. He steps away from the security desk and away from the panic button. His only way to contact the outside world. His only way to prevent what was about to happen. In a matter of minutes, the two thieves had both night watchmen completely under their control. He finished cuffing me and he cuffed my partner and very dramatically said, gentlemen, this is a robbery. The thieves lead Rick and his partner down to the basement to different areas. Rick is taken to the boiler room and cuffed to an electrical box. His eyes and mouth were duct taped and he feared for his life. It all happened so fast, he never had a chance to hit the one panic button by the guard desk. He knew no one was coming to help. Did the thieves know that as well? It appears they did, since they were in no rush to get out. path is interesting. Um, the, they took the uh, guards after they handcuffed them and taped them and brought them into the basement. About 24 minutes elapsed, though, before they, we see them again. Motion detectors placed throughout the building picked up their trail for nearly an hour and a half. But that didn't matter. Those motion detectors weren't connected to police outside. They only alert the guard sitting at the computer by the entrance. A computer that was now unmanned. It's in this hallway where we see the first motion detectors go off, so that's how we know that um, it was 24 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's about 148 and they're walking down this hallway together and they enter the Dutch room. Which is right there. Exactly, and from the Dutch room they took six pieces and that's where in Including terms- Including the Rembrandt. The, Rem the three Rembrandts, the Vermeer and uh, the um, Flink and the Chinese uh, vessel. The real work had begun for the thieves, but as they get ready to remove Rembrandt's storm on the Sea of Galilee, his only seascape, a high-pitched alarm sounds. Pulitzer Prize-winning reporter Stephen Kirkjian has investigated this case for the Boston Globe for decades. He says this alarm was designed to keep visitors from getting too close to the Rembrandt. That seascape, even if you look at prints of it now, images of it now, you will see a vision, an etching of, Rem of Rembrandt himself. Art experts, art specialists, common folk knew that. And they would come up and they would put their finger close to point out the, uh, the image of Rembrandt, and if they got too close, then the alarm would sound. Like the motion detectors, this alarm was not connected to the outside world. But did the thieves know that as well? Because they didn't pack up and leave at that point. They continued on with their crime, and they took their time. Same path backwards goes through the early Italian room, the Raphael room, all the, all the while passing incredibly priceless art, famous art, Raphael's um, important Chinese pieces, Fra Angelico, and walks back through to the short gallery where the thief um, takes five sketches by Degas and a Napoleonic finial from atop of um, 
a flag that uh, Napoleon's reg first regiment carried. Throughout his actions here in the short gallery, he's going back and forth about a half dozen times, again, passing things that any art expert um, would say, my God, these are two Raphaels, uh, small and portable, why wouldn't you take those? It's a great mystery to the, to the theft. At 2.41 a.m., the door to the museum opens and closes. The thieves were gone. Once they leave, they've never heard from again. The next morning, Rick was relieved to be found and to be alive. But he knew almost immediately that he was a suspect. I knew I would. I mean, I opened up the door, you know. I mean, once I sat, you know, sat down with the FBI, I think the first thing I said was, well, what do you want to know? Because, uh... I, I knew. I mean, I was like, well, I'm the guy who opened up the door. They're obviously going to be looking at me. The FBI certainly was looking at him. Was it an inside job? How else could the thieves have pulled this off? And who else did the FBI suspect? Randy K. joins us now live. It's such a fascinating mystery and has been one for now for more than 20 years. What about that security guard that, that you heard in that interview? Do, do investigators think he had anything to do with the heist? Anderson, to this day, not a single museum employee has been charged in connection with the crime, but not one of them has been fully cleared either. That's the thing. The guard's role to this point is really unclear. I mean, was it an inside job or was he perhaps just careless? Because he told us that he used to complain about the lack of security at the museum in public. So anyone could have overheard him. Maybe they jumped on the opportunity. And here's the kicker, Anderson. It has been so long, so many years have passed that the statute of limitations has run out. So even if it was that guard we interviewed or anyone else, the thieves can no longer be charged. And Anderson, just this week, the FBI said that they finally know after 23 years who did this. They're not naming the suspects, but in our reporting, we put together quite a list of suspects under consideration.